Hello, uh, my name's Phil Earl. I'm a writer of a number of books for children and young adults. And I'm here today with Scottish Book Trust to talk to you about plotting, to talk to you about storyline, about giving you the tools that you need to create a really effective and gripping story that will hold your reader from the first page to the last. At its most basic elements, when you're telling a story, all you have to do is select a character, your hero or heroine, and you need to take them on a journey from point A to point B. And by the time they reach point B, you have to have significantly changed them. Things have to have happened to them that have made them see themselves or see the world differently. And if you think about their journey from point A to point B as a line graph, and bear with me because I'm terrible at maths, but to me this makes perfect sense. Think about the character's journey as a line graph, and the line graph should look like this. It should look almost like a mountaintop or a series of mountaintops. Or alternatively, you could think about it as a roller coaster. Think about this. When you're on a roller coaster, the thing you love about it is that often at the start of it, there's a long ascent. And while you're ascending up to the top of the roller coaster, the tension's building, the excitement is building. You know that something big, something exciting is going to happen. And then there's that moment where you reach the top and all of a sudden there's this huge ascent and that's where the adrenaline kicks in. And it's really important when you're telling a story that the trajectory or the line graph of your story or your plot never looks like this. It should never be a line just going horizontally across the page because that's a boring story. It's a dull story. It's a story without tension. It's a story without cliffhangers. It's really important that your character succeeds at times. Everybody likes to see a character, their hero, succeed. But it's also vital that you see them fail. Because it's only when you see a character fail and hit rock bottom that you really see what they're made of. It's about how they pick themselves up, dust themselves down and go again. That's what makes for a character that your reader will absolutely love. One of the best examples I can think of of a character going on an amazing journey and a character being changed by that journey that he has to go on is Stanley Elnatz, uh, the hero of Louis Sacker's Holes. It's an absolutely magnificent book for so many reasons. And what I love about Stanley is that when he starts the story, uh, he is the ultimate loser, the ultimate zero. There's been a feeling around the Yelnats family for generations that they are losers, that they are cursed, that they are jinxed. And it seems like for the first third of the book that Stanley is following on a similar trajectory. He's found guilty of stealing some trainers and sent to a kid's prison in the middle of a desert. And it's blazing hot every day and he's surrounded by bullies and a psychotic prison warden. And you don't think life can get any worse. And every day he has to dig a hole, five foot by five foot. And it's only when he hits rock bottom and he starts to dig these holes for the first time that he actually sees his true potential. That he actually starts to see that by digging these holes, he actually starts to climb out of this trajectory and starts to show you what a real true hero he is. And by the time you get to the end of this actually quite short book, you see him almost become the saviour of his family. The person that reverses these generations of feeling that the Yelnats will always be losers. He's a magnificent hero and it's the fact that he sees these magnificent highs as well as lows that makes him a character that the reader falls in love with. So here's a really simple and I think effective exercise that will help you plot out your story. And this came courtesy of a really fine writer for young adults and children called Anthony McGowan. He's written a number of novels and I'd really suggest you seek out his stuff because it's absolutely fantastic. And his advice is this, before you start to write, work out your plot by answering four really simple questions. Point one, who is your main character? Point two, what is your main character trying to achieve? What are their objectives? What are their ambitions or goals? Point three, who is it in the story that's going to try and stop them? Who's going to get in their way? Who's going to be the obstacle? This is the point where you can introduce a bad guy, a nemesis, someone who wants to scupper their plans. And point four, what will happen to your character if they're not successful in achieving their goals? Tony says, and I agree with him, that if you can answer those four basic questions, your path to writing a gripping and enticing story will be a lot more straightforward. So let me talk to you about endings. I mean, as with every part of the writing process, it's, it's absolutely imperative that you get the ending right. As a reader, you know yourself, there's nothing more disappointing than being gripped and entranced by a book for 250 pages, only to see that final chapter, those final five pages, fall flat on its face. It's frustrating and it's disappointing. And as the writer of those stories, you've got to think really hard about how you, how you end your character's journey. Let me give you an example. When I wrote about Billy, he's 15 years old, he's grown up in care, he's had a pretty atrocious life, awful, dreadful, sickening things have happened to him all the way through from being born. 
And he discovers about halfway through his journey uh, that he's good at something, that actually he's got a real talent for boxing. And he uses boxing as a way to get out a lot of the frustrations and the angers that he's bottled up inside him for years. And at that point, when I discovered that boxing was going to be the vehicle, the way for him to express his anger, there was a real danger for me to get carried away. I'm a huge boxing fan. That's one of the reasons I worked it into the story. And I had to hold myself in check. I could have quite easily gone off on a tangent that said, OK, Billy's great at boxing. In six months' time, he'll be boxing in a ring as an amateur. In a year's time, he'll be fighting for titles in Britain. And in two years' time, the ending could be him being crowned, you know, world champion. And that would have been ridiculous. It would have been such a different ending from the one I set out to write. So it's important, it's vital, as you approach the ending to your story, revisit the start, revisit the reasons that you're writing this book in the first place, and try and hold yourself in check. Don't succumb to giving them that, that sugared uh, fairy tale ending if that's not the story that you intended to write.